I'm looking at it. It's a good idea to do what's called a hot scrape, which is where you um, do what I just did, except maybe give it another pass with the iron so the base and the ski has really been heated up. And before it and before it hardens, immediately scrape. And what's what's done then is is that you see this, you've heated the base up, and um, and dirt will bubble to the surface, and then you want to get that off. So what you'll find when you do a hot scrape is it won't be sort of red that'll be scraped off. It'll be red mixed with black, which is all the dirt that got embedded into the base of the ski. So an old an old or a ski that hasn't been waxed in a number of weeks, it's good to do one quick hot scrape. And that's all you do. You just, do, you just scrape with a really sharp um, base scraper. This is a piece of plexiglass. It's very simple to achieve the board. Scraping a ski is probably the, the, that's the hardest part of the job. It's as much, it's as much work doing that as, as anything. Um, and, it, and you can make your life a lot easier if this if this little piece of plastic is sharp. There are a number of ways to do it. You can take a piece of sandpaper and staple it to a flat surface, and then you just go. Is it one easy way to do it? Or you can buy one of these little edge scraper sharpening doohickeys. Um, uh, the sandpaper on the bench is actually, I think, the most effective and the cheapest. It's really quick and easy. This, this works okay, but it's but it does uh, it does get it sharp. See, if this, if this edge isn't sharp, uh, it's going to be really hard to scrape the wax off, and you have to scrape it all off. So we're going to pretend this ski is, has um, rested for 20 minutes, um, and you always scrape from tip to tail. There's no real technique, I, I don't think, that, um, uh, that matters. You don't, you don't have to, you know, start at the tip and go right to the tail, you just want to get it all off. You hold the scraper on an angle about 45 degrees, so you're scraping on this edge. You want to make sure that you also do the edge, because remember I said the, there's the, your base is flat, but you've got a little bit of a base edge angle. Base angle, so you've got to do that's an exaggeration, but you've got to get it off the edge like that. You see, you don't want wax on the edge. So yeah, I've just tipped it up slightly to get it off there, and then it's just a matter of going over it as many times as, as needed to get it off. Because, which is again, as I said, you're not you don't want to ski on wax that's on the base. You want to ski on wax that your bases have absorbed and then is is squishing out as you ski. Um, so how much prep is it like? Hard as you, hard as you can. can. Hard yeah, it's, can. Just, it's, it's the hard work. Okay. This is what's hard for even some U14 because yeah. they just don't have the hand strength yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. and the control to do it. You can, some people like to scrape this way. That's fine. It makes no difference at all. But if you if you don't get it off, what'll end up happening, which is when you do your next step, which is um, sort of polishing, there are there are a number of types of uh, brushes. I think you, you you need two. You want a brass and a nylon. There's horsehair and there's copper and yada yada yada. Uh, I think you need two. For the brass brush, one of the things that's absolutely critical is that you put some arrows on the brass brush and you only use it in one direction. The brass, the brass bristles start like this, but as soon as you've used it a couple times, they're like this. So if, if you start pushing them this way up against the base, they're going to be digging into your base and damaging your base. So um, only, only ever in one direction. And this is this is this this too is kind of hard work. You just sort of push down and give it a scrape. The lighting in here just really sucks, so I can't illustrate a couple of the things. But if you don't if you don't scrape all the wax off, and this isn't yeah, this isn't really critical. But if you don't, you'll find these sort of foggy patches as you buff mm -hmm. with one of these, which is not the end of the world. Don't for training and stuff. 
it's just fine. But it, but the ski won't be like on race day. The ski won't be quite as fast unless you're able to scrape all the wax off and then give it a really good polish with, with your brushes. So you start with that, and you know you, you can't do this too many times. Um, uh, you know there are these roto brushes. Have anybody seen those? It's, yeah, it's, round. it's a tool that fits yeah. onto your cordless drill yeah. and you. That makes it a little bit easier, but if you know, I think the road rushes are about a hundred bucks or something. Okay. Oh, so do you again, want it's just more money. Right. We're, How are we doing? We uh, we just had a little late start. We're maybe five more minutes. Okay. Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, she's fine. Yeah, she's fine. So once you've um, scraped, remembering to scrape the wax off of the the base angle of the edge. Um, and then you have a couple passes with this, and a number of passes mm -hmm. with this. The last and final step is you have one brush. Mm -hmm. You can't do a brush. No, you can't. Can't. Yeah. Yeah. no, no, no. Good. Good. Brush to your. Um, you know, some coaches. Some coaches say you should. Um, I will. You should brush a ski. You know, 50 times or something. I don't. I don't, know. I don't have that kind of time or or energy. They get. Uh, here's here's what here's what. That's what, my, that's what mine gets. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, the last thing you have to remember to do is you've got to put your ski back in the vise this way. And I always use this edge of it. And you've got to scrape the wax off here. Oh, okay. Because it, yeah. when you melt it, yeah. it dribbles over. Um, and the more you, if you, if you, you know, the, more, the more wax you put on here, the board is just going to dribble over. And then you have to remember to scrape it off. What would happen if you don't scrape it off? You know, the first couple of, first couple of runs, um, you won't be able to set a sharp an edge. I mean, it's just wow. Anyway, yeah. I mean, you know, you spend all this time to make these razor sharp edges. No, no, it's not the end of the world. I was, I was up at, um, with Andrew McDonald at Whisper a few weekends ago, one of the races on Friday, and you know, we're walking up to the top of the hill, and Andrew looks at his skis, and you realize he, he waxed them, but completely forgot to scrape or oh my God. Them, or anything, right? Put his skis on, and off we went. He didn't notice. It. <laughs> no difference. <laughs> he was just as fast as I was on the flats, and you know, he wasn't. He had no trouble turning on the steep, icy run. So I mean, sometimes we we wonder, oh dear, you know, we're losing our minds doing all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a different. Uh, we, we put many more layers when the ski goes in a race the next day. No. The fastest ski isn't the ski that's been waxed the night before. The fastest ski is the ski that's been waxed the most number of times. And you can't do that the night before a race. You cannot do waxing the night before? Oh, you can, but you can't accomplish it. You can't make a fast ski the night before the race. It's too late. So it's still one, one layer of the yeah. yeah. You just The night before a race, you just wax the skis like you did, it, like you did any other time. Mm -hmm. So how often do you have to do it for a uh, week? Uh, I think if, are you 12, are you 14 minimum once a week? Yeah, yeah. yeah 14, you know, yeah, for sure. You 12, maybe once every two weeks. Yeah. By the season like this, probably once a week. Yeah, even it's more. Just, yeah, it's a bit dirty snow. Oh, it is. Yes. That's a very good point. I've heard that. I, I sharpen them from here, right? Right to here. And, I, and the idea is, is that if the, if the tip is really sharp, your tips are going to be a bit twitchy, which means that, you know, the, the turn ultimately starts with the tip and ends at the tail, right? You know, the first thing you engage is the tip of the ski, and I've heard people say that if the, if the tips are really sharp, your, your, your ski will be grabby. I don't know. No, I, I, I too, from here to here. If you want, it would, in order to accomplish that, is you would... Just do one pass here. There's no, there's no, there's no real trick to it. Do one here, and then the next time you'd only tune to here, and then the next time you'd only tune to here. So you'd be spending more time with the stone in the center of the ski, and the least amount of time on the ends. Or you can. Um, there you go. 
<laughs> tip is now D2, right? Piece of wood, there's these gummy stones, it's not that complicated. I wouldn't worry about it. Like, as I say, I think it sharpens it. And, and just a lot of it, you know, sharpening the skis is the most important thing. It's, you know, we, we're trying to teach our kids how to put their skis on edge and how to, how to arc a turn, and if their edges are dull, um, uh, it's much more difficult for them to do the things that the coaches are wanting them to do. So it's something that is a contribution that parents make to their kids keeping their skis sharp, even more so than last time. The little guys, although you know waxing, it's like you know the U8s, right? They got they got to slide across the flats here, and they weigh 40 pounds. You know? Their skis are waxed. They will make it across the flats. So even the little ones, it's um, it's important to take care of their skis. So when you go away on the uh, trip on the weekend, if yep. you keep your skis on a Friday, can you just not bother getting out? Yeah, yeah, you're fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. The the colder and icier and harder the snow, the more often you have to, you know, um, uh, uh, you know uh, even the U14s, they could probably ski two days in a row, even on, even on hard conditions, and, and it's not the end of the world. But I find like some mix if they're doing like... Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to work. Got to Friday. If you're if your kids at a camp like that, I mean, tune every day because it's like they get this they get this awesome opportunity to do real high intensity training, and you know it just doesn't make sense for them to be doing it on a dull pair of skis. So you know the. the we, did, we, we had a little late start here, Seth. Oh, that's Sorry. perfect. Yeah. I find it's a good social thing for the parents when the kids are sleeping at night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Parents all go. Yeah, parents yeah, all go down after bring glass of wine down into the uh, <laughs> down into the underground, and they exactly. make a big mess and have a laugh. And, no, it's <laughs> Absolutely.